Welcome to this week's vlog. I didn't get enough votes to become a CRT council member, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but I hope those people that did are going to do justice for the narrow boat or for the boating community. Um, I think there's there's a lot going on that, um, in my opinion, CRT aren't really being transparent in many ways. Uh, there's um, there's almost sunk CRT boat. Now, apparently at the time, one of the contractors phoned up CRT and he said, all oh, your, your boat's half sunk. Uh, but three or four days later, it was still in the same position. Now, in my experience, that comes down to people that don't really care anymore. In my experience, I'm sure that's not the case. But, you know, to have a boat in that condition doesn't present itself with an organisation that's that's on the up. Um, there's a few things that I, I'm annoyed about um, with CRT um, and the reason why I want to become a council member I shall explain in another video because it's holding the execs to account. I'm not sure they are being held to account. For example, here's just a little snippet. Life better by water. There's little signs everywhere on the towpath. Life's better by water. Okay, that's a nice one. How is that measurable? How much did that cost? There's also an Instagram feed that CRT are doing, and I must say it's very, very good. I would imagine that's been done professionally. How much did that cost? And what is the end result? What are you hoping to achieve by that? If it doesn't bring funds in to the CRT coffers, then why are you doing it? I just don't get it. There's lots of things that I wanted to ask questions of the exec team of CRT, um, so I'm unable to do so, but I do hope that those new voted in people are going to hold CRT to account. And I think any organisation that isn't held to account properly tends to become a little bit tyrannical, in my opinion and in my experience as well. Not sour grapes, just something I wanted to do. I wanted to make a difference. Today, I move from Cosgrove to the mouth of Blissworth Tunnel. I don't actually go through Blissworth Tunnel, that'll be next week. But a fun packed, we'll discuss fun, um, packed of different content, different things, lots of me nattering on, I won't natter on anymore, um, so I'll leave it to you to discuss. Run the VT. Another good day to move because it's not raining and it's been raining an awful long time over the past well weeks really windy and rainy and uh, here's a move to Yardley Gobbion or somewhere similar ready to punch through Stoke Bruin tomorrow Very squelchy. Hello, mate. How you doing? Hey. You alright? Hey. Yeah, I'll react. Office. How you doing? All right. I was talking to the fisherman. He was giving me a hard time because I was in the RAF. Over, There's a few people crossing the lock, me mainly, and another bloke with his uh, with his rubbish.
I met Tony and Bev while I was at uh, Cosgrove and they had uh, pushed through to get some water north of Cosgrove Lock and they snaffled up the last mooring spot so I stayed a little a little extra where I was um, we're gonna see their boat in a bit actually but all these areas north of Cosgrove were busy as people had come through Stoke Bruin there's their boat look But the sun was out, it was a nice day. Often wondered what it's like to stay on one of these things. Yogurt pots they're known as, colloquially. GRPs, glass reinforced plastic. Now, you have to go past these moored boats slowly, so this is real time, slow, slow going. And on the left here, there's something called the Navigation Inn. Nice place. It's New Year's Eve. And uh, I haven't got any nice stuff on the boat. Not New Year's Eve type stuff. So I'll go for a walk to find a local village. And uh, we're on old towpaths, look. Proper towpaths. Wet towpaths, muddy towpaths. So Christmas done. A week later, during the week's flown. I've spent most of it on the boat because it's rained. Majority of the time. Big generator. But that's running all the washing machines and drying machines. Not bad. Not been a lot of movement on the canals today. New Year's Eve, I suppose. To be expected. But there's going to be a choke point at Stoke Bruin. I imagine, anyway. I uh, am moving through Stoke Bruin tomorrow. Prior to the winter stoppages. Now, do I push through Blissworth Tunnel? The answer is, well, I don't really want to, but if there's no mooring at Stoke Bruin, then I'm gonna to have to. And there'd be a race because I think people will be trying to come south through Stoke Bruin. So they're missing winter stoppages and those people going north. So Blissworth Tunnel could be a bit of a nightmare. That said, if I can park more stop at Stoke Bruin then the following day I will be up at the crack of sparrows so actually I'm thinking now do I want to push through that Blissworth tunnel at seven and then when I come through the other side it will be first light I think that's what I might do that's the plan will it come off who knows Cold wind, ooh, chilly. And my Jack Pike Wellingtons. Very comfortable actually. Got some insoles in them though. And at the shops at Yardley Gobbian, I bought some stuff ready to eat for tonight. Um, so I've been to Yardley Gobbian, Gobian, whatever it's called, and I've bought some stuff. Um, so this is called a Boaty Brunch, or Boaty Evening Meal, or whatever it, whatever I'm using it for. But it's a Spanish omelette. Sausages chopped up, all I need to do is just add everything else. So 
success in a pan and success on a plate. And all that's left to say now is, I want to get down with the kids. Uh, so, um, and it's all civilian. Bon apps. And um, I'll see you later. levels of water, better than low levels of water. We'd be whinging about that too, wouldn't we? Look at that, look at that. Lovely, lovely. This time last year, well this time last year, Christmas time last year, met Lloyd. I stopped here for fuel and maybe a bag of coal, can't remember. And there was my start of my friendship with Lloyd. And I also met Dennis on the way back down. Start of a friendship called with Dennis. Nice oh, little place, Baxter. So I wonder how much it cost. There was a place. Um, I'm trying to think where I was. Ah, oh, Pear Tree Marina. I was talking to a, uh, a fella from Pear Tree Marina. Ooh, four hundred pounds per calendar month. For 40, I think he said he had a 45 foot boat. But 400 pound a month, I mean, that's Milton Keynes. So you're gonna pay a little bit more because you're in town. Um, but, wow, 400, that, that's nearly five grand a year. Now notice going through this bridge, how calm the water is. Lovely, easy. But it wasn't like that later on. I mean, look at all the fields. All the runoff from the canals have caused that flooding in the fields. But, looking behind me, lovely sunrise, lovely pictures there. Moon's coming in on that boat, isn't it? Hey, eh? Chocker. It's probably, I'm not locking them, but it may be that they've been forced out of their homes for whatever reason, and they've piled everything they own onto two boats. I try not to criticize until you've walked in the footprints of those people who own what they do, or who live how they do. Life is a complex thing. But as you see coming through this bridge, I was, I had to push the old accelerator a little bit further forward, and here's Bev walking the dog. Now you can notice the boat going backwards. And she briefed me to say that there's strong flow up ahead. There's water running off the canal on the right there, look. And then you, look at this. Look at this, this is from the River Towels, Tows, Towels, whatever its name is. Anyways, it's an offshoot of a river, it's an off. Ooh, 2,000 revs I was going. Punching through that, in real time that is as well. And then on to Stoke Brewer Bottom Lock to get some water. Lock Landing's a bit wet. Mind you, to be honest, the water's dropped since I've been here. Um, so we've had a fair bit of rain. I've refueled with water. I'm waiting for Tony to turn up. I don't know how long he's gonna be. I was a good hour in front of him, but I faffed around here for a good 40, 50 minutes. And uh, just have to wait and see. Nice fellow I've just spoken to. He's going to do a bit of a recce for me later on. A well-oiled machine we were going through all these locks. Breathe in, just squeeze into that lock.
There he is, nice fella. And on to Stoke Bruin top lock. Lots of gong goozlers. There's Tony standing on his boat showing off. There was a Morris dancing team. A traditional dance of um, some Morris's. Lots of people at Stoke Brewing though. And as you go through Stoke Brewing itself, all it was chocker. Again, breathe in. There wasn't an awful lot of room. Plenty for me. Now the boat sort of squeezed in a bit. Here's all the CRT boats preparing for the closures uh, to fix some locks and whatever they're doing to fix. And also I noticed there was this CRT boat looking slightly worse for wear. I don't know why it was sinking, but it was. Didn't look good though, did it, eh? Hey? And I wondered if I was going to be lucky enough to find somewhere to moor. And I thought, oh, unfortunately. Oh, oh. What about that space there? Is it, is it big enough? So I thought I'd take a chance. It must have been 67 foot, because my boat's 66 and I just about squeezed in. The parking ferry was kind. I'm in between, crammed in between CRT boats. But I had to remove my um, bike rack, so I squeezed everything into the, uh, the pramud. Well, it's only for a couple of days, and then I've got to go through that tunnel. But um, I thought when I passed it, because the only, the only other spot was down here next to the winding hole. And I think this young lady, just about in time, well, there we go. Parking ferry was good for her too. Wonder what damage that's done to the boat. CRT, are they staying afloat or struggling? Don't know. Don't know what's caused it either. Rather strange. Rainy day. Another day indoors. Uh, a tunnel. What do they call it? I can't think of the words. Use your words, Chris. Use your words. Don't know. Makes the tunnel look quite big, doesn't it? Although there's more on top of the waterline than there is below. Makes sense, really. Um, but the centre of the tunnel is still deeper than my height rather interesting and it's a mile and a half long there we go Blissworth Tunnel been through here a few times never noticed it the word I was looking for was template must have been quite hard to dig all that out from of Blissworth. That night I went to the Indian with Bev and Tony. Um, lovely couple, great great company um, and the Indian, I, I, I only have a Passandra or Korma. I'm pretty mild as far as that um, Indian food is concerned. Um, the food was great, the service was fantastic and I think that makes all the difference if I was to go there, if I was to recommend anyone to go there, you know, the food, the food was, you know, but the service, well, honestly, we, we were the only people in there. Um, but the fella who, waiter, could, I couldn't fault him in any way, shape or form. So for that reason alone, absolutely worth going to the, um, the Indian at Stoke Bruin. I am struggling for content in the winter. The, uh, the long the long winter nights starting about, although they are drawing out, they still start about half past four and they don't get light until about eight o'clock the following morning. I have been out taking some sunset photos. I have been up taking some sunrise photos. It's hard work in the winter. It is. It is hard work. I'm not going to say to you, oh, my life's so difficult because it's not. Although, 
although it's not running as smoothly as I'd like it to. But maybe that's for another day. Until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, and um, I'll see you next week. Ciao, Papa.